Hey everybody, today we are looking at how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is a handy tool that you can use for just about any type of sublimation project you have coming up, and it's actually pretty easy to do. So let's get started. First thing you wanna do is create a new file by going to File, New, and you don't necessarily need a particularly big file, so I'm going to use an 8.5 by 11 at 300 PPI. I'm going to check to make sure that I'm in RGB color and click create. The next thing I'm going to do is look at my product template, which today is for Sublime Knee Socks that I purchased from Condi. And this template also has come from the Condi website. This template is actually for two socks. So you have a left side and a right side with a very, very thin line in between. So the pattern that we're creating, we really want to be kind of tall and not all that wide. It's important to know the dimensions of the product template you'll be working with because this will influence how you create your pattern. So now we're gonna go back to the file we just created and it's in a landscape orientation and we really need it to be portrait since we need a tall and narrow pattern. So go up to image and image rotation, select 90 degrees clockwise and we will now have a portrait orientation for our canvas. Now I'm going to bring some design elements onto my canvas. I go to this folder on my desktop where I have my cute little fox images. Now I can either drag and drop them one at a time onto the canvas like you see here, or I can go back to the folder and using the control key as I click select multiple images, drag them and drop them over to the Photoshop canvas. And then what I have to do is I have to hit the enter key on my keyboard until each of the images shows up as separate layers. You can see all those layers on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Now I'm going to select all of those layers and resize these images so that they're relatively small. By selecting control T, I create a sizing box around these images. I hold down the shift key while I move the corner box to proportionally shrink the images. And then when I'm done, I hit the enter key and that ends the transformation function. Now I wanna get a closer view of my canvas so I can make my pattern. So I'm going to press the alt key on my keyboard while I use the roller on my mouse. And this will zoom in closer to the area where I'm going to create my pattern. I'll start by arranging each of these layers so I can take a look at the design elements that I'm working with. I've deselected each of the layers, so now all I have to do is click on the image that I want to move and bring it to where I want it to go. If you don't have this setting set up on your version of Photoshop, you can just select each layer through the layer tray in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Right now I see that the paw print is out of proportion in size with the other elements of my design. I know I want to use this paw print as an accent within my pattern, so I'm going to press Control T to activate the transformation function. Then with my finger pressing the Shift key, I'm going to proportionally shrink the size of this paw print. Now it's time to actually create my pattern. I have four main fox elements here and I am going to arrange them so that they alternate across four lines with the paw print as accent on each line. Once that's done, I need to duplicate my paw prints because I need at least three more of them. I can do this easily by selecting the paw print layer, then pressing the alt key as I click in the center of the paw print. Then I slide my mouse across the canvas to create a brand new layer. If you look in the layer tray, a second layer with the word copy has been created. I'll do this two more times until I have enough paw prints for my pattern. Now that all my design elements are on the canvas, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time making sure that they are in line with each other, proportional, and that my pattern looks good. So I'm liking how my pattern is looking and it's now time to actually tell Photoshop to turn this into a pattern. So I select the rectangle marquee tool and create a box around my pattern. Now, if the box that you draw with the marquee tool is not exactly where you want it, Photoshop doesn't let you adjust it. 
what you have to do is click outside of the canvas to cancel the box that you've already created and then draw a new box, hopefully to the size that you want it to be for your pattern. Next, you're gonna go up to edit and select the define pattern function. This will ask you to choose a name for your pattern. And then once you click OK, it will save it to your pattern library, which we will access in our sock template. All right, so we've pulled up our sock template and I've noticed that this template is in CMYK, whereas we designed our pattern in RGB. So before we do anything else, we need to change the color mode. What we do is we go up to image, click on that, and go to the mode function. And in the drop down, you'll see CMYK color selected. Just click on RGB color and you should be good to go. The next step is to select the paint bucket tool and then go up to the options toolbar at the top of the screen. As you can see, we already have pattern selected by default, the paint bucket goes to foreground. So if it says foreground on your screen, click it over to pattern and then click over in this box, which will show you all of the default patterns that come with Photoshop, as well as this new pattern that you've created. Select your pattern and then click inside the template. You'll see the design that you created on the other screen, fill in the template as a seamless pattern. Now for this particular product, you see only half of the screen was filled, and that's because there are two halves to this particular template. So now I'm gonna click on the other side and you'll be able to see how both sides of the pattern fill in the entire screen and you have just made yourself a truly seamless pattern. Since the pattern is saved to your pattern library, you'll be able to apply this in the future for any sublimation project you wish. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something and you have a lot of ideas for how you can use patterns in your sublimated products. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and check back at sublimationtoday.com for the latest news, tips, tricks, and products for your sublimation business.